Good morning, everyone. It's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And the second meta unit has come out four days after the start of the meta. Uh, Elmesia El Ruthalion, uh, yeah, sure, is here. She is here for a long, long time until the end of August. It is the end of June right now. So she's going to be around for quite a while. So don't feel overly pressured to summon for her uh, because she's a hot elf waifu. That is pretty much the only reason that you should be pressured to summon for her is because she's hot elf waifu. Because her skills are, uh, you know, they're, they're okay. They have some interesting quirks, as we found out during the stream uh, that I will go over. But uh, like the Maribel and Lumi banner, she has no other EX units here. It is just the old five stars that have received skill fusions. This is not a good banner. This should immediately be the number one thing that turns people off. Because even if you're going to summon for a new character on a single unit banner, which I already do not recommend, uh, there better be some good other featured characters that actually makes it worth your while. You know, uh, New Year's Blessing Rimuru, Vengeance Raphael, uh, you know, characters of that kind of level. That's what gets people into summoning, because even if you don't pull Elmesia, your chances of pulling something else that's fairly useful is better than nothing. But here, you have her, who's uh, mid. We'll talk about her in a second. And you have a whole bunch of old, two-year-old units. Literally, like, the newest character in here is Earth Lumi, and she came out in, like, within four months of the game releasing. That's, this is not a banner you want to summon on for the unit quality and for featured unit quality. So already big points off to her right there. Uh, her skills will actually go into her kit. That way we can see them all maxed out. Uh, here she is, because I already had her filtered. She is magic. She is earth. She's an AOE character. She uses the earth book out of the anniversary coin shop. So there we go. The only thing we're missing now is that water spear. She has attack growth, which is interesting in a defense meta. She, you know, she's AoE earth damage, though. The beatdown is earth. Makes sense. Uh, her, she does 300%, and she lowers magic resistance by 15% on the enemies, which means that she is the setup to the next unit, which I assume will be a single target earth unit, probably Rimuru, but they could throw us for a curveball, depending on what comes out, you know, this coming week in slime. I don't know. Her first skill that we did not know because the skill preview didn't have it, she increases Earth and Fire allies alt damage by 70%. So you are locked into Earth or Fire units getting that alt buff. She generically reduces enemy alt, da alt damage down by 100%. So this skill, the second part of the skill, is generic. The first part is locked to Earth and Fire, which makes sense because her other skill is also locked to Earth and Fire allies. Gets 100% extra HP for two turns, and then as a side effect, enamors a single target, which essentially gives you 15% free alt gauge at the end of every turn that is active per enemy. So you could put this on two different people, you could get 30% alt gauge and for one turn at the, end of the, uh, at the end. It's a gimmick that we see here and there. Is it effective? Eh... Mm, that's debatable. Uh, this max HP skill, though, right? The only time you're really actually going to get use out of it is if you already have the new Prosper Lumi. Because that's it. That's the only way you're really going to see a lot of value, because Lumi will then heal back up to your new total max HP. Now, something that hasn't happened until now in the game is that when this two-turn thing is over and your max HP goes back down to normal, you will retain that super high HP. And to uh, to show that off, I have a clip of that happening in the live stream that I'll pull up right here. So this is muted, muted, muted. There we go. So we've used the skills. We're, we have the uh, Lumi buff on, and we're going to send some stuff. And then we'll take a look at what our HP pools are, eventually. Here we go, so we'll hold down. Elmesia has 57,000 HP, because that's 100%, that's double what her normal HP stat is. But you can see that we have 57,000 of 28,000. So we effectively have double HP 
without it being reduced. And the, the reason why that's important is because previously we've had other characters with this raise max HP skill. When the turn was over, when the limit was over, their max HP just went back down to match this. If it was full, then it remained full, but it was full to 28. This is the first time that the HP then remains at the higher number. So you still have double HP, and if she never gets hit, then for the rest of the fight, essentially, she will have double HP. And, you know, if you take damage back down to 28,000, well, then you're, you're going to be, your, your cap is still going to be 28,000 after that point. But this brings in now a very interesting um, thought process where the DPS unit next week or whatever will have some sort of HP scaling buff. So you'll do extra damage per you know extra amount of HP that you have, and it will take this huge number into account. I could see that as a very real possibility. The problem, again, resides in two things. One is that she is locked to Earth and Fire. Like, straight up locked. If you are not Earth and Fire, you don't get HP. If you are not Earth and Fire, you don't get alt damage. So if you don't have an Earth or Fire team, this unit does nothing for you. Like, the whole point of her kit means nothing if you have no Earth and Fire characters. So that's your first problem. Her second problem is that she needs Lumi to make maximum use out of this skill. You can put other healers on the team, but the only one that's actually going to get you up to this extra 100% HP in two turns is Octogram Romarus, a unit that is not that useful on most teams because you don't need that 60% heal, right? And the next best healer, uh, for AoE at least, is going to be Trainee, who does 30%. So you can only ever get 60% extra HP out of this skill if you don't have the new Lumi. So that locks you into needing a different character to really make full use of her. Uh, going over the rest of her kit, her Valor trait, she seals Protection Gauge, which can be useful for newer players that are going past turn 3 and are worried about you know their New Year's Shion getting, you know, wrecking them. It can be useful. It's one of the better skills. And then her actual trait, if you pull dupes of her, if you send 6 blues, she gets extra attack the next turn. Uh, it does make sense for a, a, a damaging quote-unquote character. Uh, fine, whatever. She gets extra alt damage when she's maxed out, as normal, and she gets extra crit damage with Rimaru. So this is why it's pretty easy to imagine that next week we're going to have a Rimaru that gives people crit, because we're getting crit damage and no one on the team currently does that. And he might have that HP scaling mechanic, but that's totally up in the air. So, that is Elmizia's kit. A and if we look at it, like, I had the filter up for a reason. This is the entire batch of units that will be 100% useful uh, for Elmizia. Earth and Fire, right? Earth and Fire characters, and then also the new Lumi, who his revive skill, her revive skill, works on Commander and Prosper units. This, if you want to use all three of those conditions, Earth, Fire, four conditions, Earth, Fire, Prosper, Commander, this is what you're left with. This is the exact amount of units that will get everything they need from Lumi and Elmizia. This is not a really good batch of characters, and I wouldn't even count Mirai since she's a collab, and only some people have her. So you're left with Warrior's Mind Rimuru, Summer Shizu, Commander Shizu, and then Rieger, Old Old Shizu, Old Old Lumi, Old Old Trainee, and then a couple 3-star, 4-stars, uh, whatever they are. That's not good. You know, you know what's good? Um, if you were to do, like, wind allies and something else. Um, wind and light. Look at this batch of characters. Look how many more characters are on these teams. Right? And, you know, yes, we don't have the category restrictions, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that Elmizia needs, needs, not can, needs a very specific team to work efficiently. And if you can't build that necessary team, there is no point in summoning for her. If you don't have the new Lumi, there is no point in summoning for Elmizia, other than the fact that she is the an Earth AoE EX character that is not free to play Mirren from the Ticket Multis. Like, that's the unfortunate thing, is that she is the only 
the only EX AoE Earth character that is premium summonable. That's her value. And she'll do good damage in this Jubilee coming up because she's AoE Earth uh, EX character and she's on the team. And that's the only reason. Outside of that, I don't know when you're going to use this whole HP skill uh, in normal content. Maybe, maybe, and we'll try it out, Valor Cup for some really ganked out HP stats. But that's only for ranked. And that's only for sweats, right? Only the sweats care about having max HP to maximize their points. Normal people playing ranked Valor Cup, they want 20 fights done in 20 minutes and they're out. They don't give two shits. Because ranked Valor Cup rewards are terrible. And they remain terrible. This skill right here, again, if you don't have any Earth or Fire characters that you're trying to nuke with, this does nothing. You can look at it as a personal buff. Yeah, sure. Because she is buffing herself. Great. But there are other characters that do alt damage for 70% that are not restricted to teams. This alt resistance down 100%, it looks very cool. And it's a very powerful skill. There are other characters who lower alt resistance. Right? You can still make use of it. It won't be 100%. But it'll be a decent amount to where your damage will still be good. Alright? Elmesia is not a necessary character. She is... She needs other characters to work properly. And that's your problem. So, if you already have skipped Maribel and Lumi because you're like, I don't like this meta, then you should also skip Elmesia because you're not going to get full value out of her and you're not going to unlock her full potential by lacking Lumi and Maribel. If you want to summon for her because she's hot elf waifu, then be my guest. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't save you from that. Waifu over meta. Yeah. If you're a newer player and you're like, man, what should I summon on? There's all these banners. You should either not summon at all and wait another fucking month. Sorry. Uh, or you need to summon on Maribel and Lumi. That way you have some semblance of a team that you can run for the rest of the game. It's not going to work well for a lot of things, but it, it it's a team. And that about covers it. The whales have already summoned. The simps have already summoned, probably. So this video is really aimed at the newer players who don't really know how to make up their minds because there's so many fucking banners to pull from. Uh, either summon for Maribel and Lumi, or decide you don't like them and then wait. And then take a break for a month and come back later. That, that, that's what I can say. I can tell you from experience of being the YouTuber, the creator, that this meta is awful. And your stone, your crystals, are better off saved. Your Koban Maltese, if they don't expire until, you know, the end or the beginning of next month, or August, I would say save your Kobans for whatever meta comes, at, you know, when this banner leaves. If they do expire before then, then you're going to have to use them, and I would use them on this banner, because it's more important, because there's two featured characters. But I think I've ranted enough. I'm going to work on the showcase tonight after we have, um, after I've eaten dinner. And then I'll try and get her video up you know, sometime tomorrow, probably around midday for me. But if you did summon for Elmesia, for Hot Elf Waifu, let me know in the comments how your summons went. Did you get luckier than my 100 pity? Or did you get unlucky and have to actually full pity her? To which case, I'm very sorry. But let me know. That's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.